Dr. Ken Romerill is a clinical haematologist and the chief executive and trustee of an organisation set up to focus specifically on multiple myeloma and to improve the lives of patients affected by it. So I said, why don't you just come on the show and tell me about it? So here he is. Welcome to the platform, Dr. Ken. Thanks very much, Annie. Thanks for having me. Thank you for reaching out. I really appreciate it. It's, um, it's, no, it it's just good. shows the power of Twitter, doesn't it? It does. <laughs> um, now, can we just begin by firstly yeah. getting you to explain what multiple myeloma is and, and why it is that you've set up your organisation to help people with it? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, set it up between six or seven years ago and, yeah, I, I, well, you know, I'm a geriatric haematologist now and I retired <laughs> finally last year from a private practice but I, you know I've been involved in blood cancers for 40 years in various forms and um, involved with setting up um, autologous marrow transplantation at Wellington so you know and I'd always had a big interest in myeloma ever since mm-hmm. I was a junior doctor <clears throat> back in Christchurch and uh, uh, it was just sad in those days because I was on the renal run and I always remember some guy coming in with renal failure with myeloma mm. and we just stuck him in a corner and we said you can't do anything and, and just left him to die and I was yes, just horrified. Yes, awful. Yeah, it was just ghastly, wasn't it? And we, we're talking about back in the 1970s. Mm. But, you know, so uh, anyway, so yeah, about five or six years ago, I decided to set up Myeloma New Zealand. There'd been Myeloma UK, mm-hmm. Myeloma Canada, you know, Myeloma Australia, been going 20 years but never myeloma New Zealand so and I thought it was a gap really that I mean it, it's a disorder that's not well known and people confuse it with melanoma mm. but it's actually three three thousand patients living now with this condition so it, it's yeah. certainly considerable and it's probably the second most common blood cancer we treat in the unit and you know when I left um, Wellington Hospital four or five years ago we'd set up specialist clinics for it and we had three doctors actually doing myeloma clinics so just showing the extent of the thing yeah it's quite involved i won't go into all the details but it does involve induction treatment and then people under 65 get offered an autologous transplant Mm -hmm. um, to, to, to consolidate the gains the problem that i had and what i've been fighting with and and engaging with pharmac usually on a friendly basis is trying to improve access to what we call novel therapies Mm -hmm. and honestly it's been really hard yards um it's it's hard to believe we haven't had a new drug funded for the last six to seven years now australia are miles ahead yeah australia miles Mm. ahead of us they've got three or four drugs including the game changer a monoclonal antibody called daratumumab so yeah we we just feel we're really been behind the the eight ball and I thought there was some light last year when one of the persons at Pharmac I was dealing with actually put out some great recommendations. Mm. And then he sort of threw cold water on it this year saying, well, Ken, I'm afraid um, I don't think we're going to be able to fund many of these because oh. we haven't got the money. The money, And you see, that's the problem. And I'm part of a, a, an umbrella group called mm. Patient Voices Aotearoa, Malcolm Mulholland. Oh, yes, I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah actually, Malcolm's yeah. been quite high profile. Yes, mm. he, he's been on the morning show mm. and I think he was on Tober O'Brien's show this morning. Mm-hmm. So Malcolm and he's had, unfortunately, his wife, Wiki, died of breast yeah. cancer a few months ago and he's been really at the forefront of the battle with Pharmac and been very upspoken. Oh, good on him. Yeah, fantastic. Mm. So, you know, we've taken part in marches to Parliament. I've spoken on the steps of Parliament. Mm -hmm. I've been to select committees. You know, done the hard yards, but really, we don't seem to have achieved what we want to achieve. Mm. So... So, the, so this is all the preamble to this um, Pharmac review. And so it's coming out it today, inter- right? It's coming out today, yeah. and I'm trying to work out where it's emanating from. I understand <laughs> it's coming from uh, Mr. Uh, Minister Little's probably doing a press conference around 11. That's what I'm assuming. He might mm. put it on his Facebook. I don't know. That's what he does. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Sorry. If, so honestly, have, you have to dig around the internet for, for things from the government these days because they could, could pop up anywhere. <laughs> well, 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 you know, it came to our you notice just late, you know, last night on on, on our group that it mm. was coming out. We, we had no warning. 
and I, I, I have upset Minister Little. I, and look, I've met with mm. him. I had a good meeting with him before Christmas to try and get some traction. Mm. But then um, we, all of us got frustrated. Where Fair enough, I'd report? say. Or yeah. where's the report? It's been sitting on his desk since the end of February. Mm. No reason offered for why it hasn't been released. The interim report was quite damning. Mm-hmm. But we, we think this report is going to be quite critical. Farming. That, that's our, and there's going to be 33 recommendations, which I understand mm-hmm. is a lot of recommendations for a report, seriously. Yeah. So, yeah, so there we are. So we're waiting with bated breath to see what is in the report at 11 mm. o'clock. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. I, I think <laughs> your point about um, basically Australia being so far ahead and and it yeah, being so difficult to get new drugs, specifically for, for cancers in general. I know we had yes, uh, Dr. Des Gorman was on, um, he was on our show a few weeks ago, and he was saying, mm. like, even as, as a public health is- expert, he had to fork out and try and get private treatment for his own cancer um, because yeah, it just well, wasn't well, available. I'm the same. I, yeah. I, I, I mean, I put it in the paper. I've got cancer. I'm dealing with cancer. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, I, Ken. I, I, well, that's the way it is. But yeah. I've been dealing with it for 15, 16 years. But I, I, I had to pay out yeah. of my own pocket for drug, drugs this year. I oh. did. And if I want to get the state-of-the-art drugs that mm. I want, mm. it's going to cost me $6,000 a month. Oh my! And these God. drugs, the, these are called PARP inhibitors for prostate mm-hmm. cancer, and they are funded in Australia. So that's so. It's embarrassing, level, isn't it? It's just well, I mean, embarrassing. It's bloody annoying. Actually. Yeah, it's I just think not on. <laughs> I just think it's actually we talk about having a public health system, right? We talk yeah, about no, 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 no. no. It's just. Yeah. I am well, you know so what? Cross. It's become a two-tier. Mm. I'm going to be a bit out, out here and mm-hmm. outspoken, but it's it's a two-tier system because mm-hmm. basically, if you've got money, you go to one of the private oncology services mm. and you pay for pay for non-funded drugs. So yeah. uh, you know, if you're rich, you can buy these drugs um, exactly. if you want to. Yeah, and it's so it's actually mimicking countries to. like uh, my partner's from Brazil, and she yeah. says mm-hmm. that over there. Basically, you're, you're screwed if you're poor, but if you have money, exactly. you get excellent health care. Yeah, it's the same in India and places like that, yeah. exactly. Mm-hmm. And it's, yeah. we kind of, I think as New Zealanders, we kind of put out that, look, we've got a public health system and we're all progressive. We actually know we're sliding into this space where yeah. you might get mm-hmm. the bare minimum, but as well, you say... The stuff I that you need. You just don't know. You just mm. don't know until it hits you in the face, until you get the diagnosis and then mm. you delve into it and then you find out what's really going on. Because mm. most people just go on and uh, on their own way and don't worry too much. But yeah, that's, that's the problem. So I mm. guess following the release of this report, the next phase for you is um, going to be, I guess, holding uh, Minister Little's feet to the fire and saying, right, which of these recommendations yes, are you going exactly. to... Yeah, I know, I know. So yeah, precisely, that's right. Because mm-hmm. honestly, the the farming model, and and they will say it's been successful. Mm-hmm. Well, it has because it's kept the budget down, mm-hmm. and they've been able to keep um, keep it small. But you know, they got 197 million in the budget, and mm-hmm. that's nice. Um, but it's over a couple of years. And our group would say, yes, that's okay, but it's not enough. It probably needed to be three times that mm-hmm. to address all the problems. I mean, you know, you've got the trikafta, the cystic fibrosis mm-hmm. group wanting that funded, and that's an incredibly expensive drug. I don't know how they're going to do that. Yeah. So, yeah, there's lots lots to be um, to be sorted, that's for sure. So with, um, I'm not sure how much you know about the, the Australian model, no. but how are they affording these um, superior yeah, drugs? I, I don't know. Well, I think their economy is yeah. better than ours, mm-hmm. isn't it? I mean, places like Western Australia with all the you know the minerals mm. apparently they've got m- money coming out there is. But yeah. yeah, I think they're just a more robust mm. economy. But it's also about priorities. You know, yeah. is the health of New Zealanders and taxpayer is that a priority or not? And that's what we would say. You know, they seem to be able to find money to put into other things. Um, Absolutely. Why not put it into the health of our of our, of our people. Yeah, I, I can't disagree with you there. I think um, <laughs> we could probably point to a number of things that the government have done over the last few years that um, that money could have been better spent. And I think 
probably on healthcare could be a, a number one thing. Um, and yeah. Yeah. I spoke yesterday actually with um, Dr. Sawa uh, from Otago University and uh, Jane, uh, who has ovarian cancer. Um, and so I was speaking to them specifically about that, that type of cancer. And they've, they've yeah. said essentially what you've said to me today, you know, um, even for them, research is almost impossible to get done because just getting access to the biomaterials they need to do the research um, yeah. is, is just so difficult in this country. Do we need to yeah. have like a, I know obviously we're, we're reforming our health system at the moment, but that seems to be the bureaucracy. Um, do we need to really reform how we view um, medicine, treatment, um, those kind of things in New Zealand? Oh, I think that's right. I think it's a huge problem. Uh, you see, and you touched on it a bit too, like <clears throat> the only way you see that <clears throat> we as docs sometimes can give access to drugs is to join clinical trials. Mm. But um, what I found when I was sitting on an Australian group called the uh, ALLG uh, involved in myeloma, um, some of the drug companies just wouldn't get involved in New Zealand because they would say to me, I'm not going to put money into trials. You guys never found the drugs. Why should I bother? And that's the oh, problem. Yeah, that's a good point. So it's a knock-on effect. It's just a knock-on effect, you see. Mm. So it just makes it um, not an attractive place to do research. Also, some of the new trials require people to have been exposed to the drug I mentioned before, daratuma. Well, mm. if we're not using it, then these people... You can't are trial it, so. no. You can't trial it. So, yeah, so th there's there's lots of issues with the, mm. with the pharmac model and its implication for for things like trials, et cetera. Yeah. And I think um, for, for, for the average Kiwis, I think they care about this to a certain degree because they think, well, that's not right. But as you say, it's when yeah. you yeah. or your partner or your children or something exactly. are, are in the situation yeah. where suddenly... In order to save their life, you need to access a drug that you have to sell your house to pay for, or I know, or, or you take can't. On a big mortgage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, that's what people have done. They've mm. mortgaged their house, or yeah, and it's very sad, isn't it? It I is. Agree. Well, mm. we will look out for what happens with this yes, pharmac report. <laughs> um, and <laughs> yeah, let's let's catch up again once we've seen the recommendations yeah. and. And, yep. and hear what yep. you, you guys think about um, them and what Minister Little should uh, implement. <laughs> um, so exactly. keep no, in touch, uh, to Ken, <laughs> and thank you very thank much you. for sharing um, your story. Thank you. That's great. So bye bye. That Thanks. was Dr. Ken Romerl, and he is a clinical hematologist. Um, he has to, he said he has just retired, uh, but he still uh, acts as the chief executive and trustee for his. Uh, um, organisation uh, which is myeloma.org.nz uh, sorry multiple myeloma.org.nz so check that out for more information